Good morning to you. I have seen you're in the mood for a lot of things and I hope that you will be in the mood also for some reflections about our schools and uh, the teaching profession. Um, I know that I am the one between you and lunch, so I will do my best. <laughs> A long time ago already I puzzled with this question, and it's keep bothering me. Are our schools stealing the students' future? Um, I'm afraid that I have to say yes. Many of our schools do steal important parts of the future of our kids. What is wrong with schools then? Well, most of them are operating in a system that is completely out of time. That system has remained unchanged for the last period of 150 years. Many, many students are still experiencing every day what they call chalk and talk teaching, you know, traditional teaching. The power and uh, is in hands of the teachers. The teachers are the controllers and the decision makers. We know that the drawbacks of traditional teaching are widely recognized and it's true that I'm certainly not the first to mention it to Ken Robinson, but also Alvin Toffler and many others uh, talked about it. But today, Many schools do not teach our students what I believe they should know. Um, because our world is changing rapidly, um, we, the, the amount of outmoded and useless knowledge that we have is expanding every day. We are sort of not getting rid of it. And we should do that by reassessing, that is the easy way, our educational content on a regular basis. I can give you a historical example of reassessment of educational materials. When Graham Bell invented the telephone in the 70s of the 19th century, many people were convinced that the only way of using the thing was that you knew how it was put together and if you were understanding the technology behind it. Well, we know now that that is nonsense, of course, but uh, we still have lots of information in our heads that we don't need to pass to our students. For the presentation, the preparations, I need to say, of our students to their future, we need new schools to develop the new minds for the things to come. An important goal of new schools or renewed schools are, um, is that you have to learn through uh, all the possible but different kinds of resources that real life has to offer. Such a new school or renewed school needs technology as the glue for keeping the classes together. And students and teachers can bring from home their own device and use it. And using them will mean, for instance, that students can find information or contact experts um, in the subject areas that they are studying. And about the content, I'm convinced that every student needs to have a personal learning plan created together with the teacher. All schools, also the old schools, need to change in this direction. I think it's inevitable. The problem is, of course, that the current system is kept up by bureaucratic rules. Uh, lots of jobs depending on it, and many industries to feed it. But 
bureaucratic rules that need to stop and need to uh, and we need to see that we are really changing uh, education. Before I explain to you what I believe those changes have to be, I would like to say a few words about necessary preconditions as foundations of success. All schools need a vision, a vision about what good teaching is and how you achieve that at school. And I think that those discussions have to take place with all the stakeholders, parents, teachers, students, and the school management. All school, schools need, of course, well-prepared teachers. Um, I think that those teachers need all the skills and knowledge necessary to be able to utilize technologies in for educational purposes. And of course, you need materials, digital qualified materials. And you need reliable infrastructures. It's about the availability and the quality of computers, networks, and internet connections. These preconditions have been written down in uh, what we call the four in balance model of Kennesnet. Kennesnet is a Dutch organization dedicated to ICT innovation in Dutch schools. Okay, but let me tell you how I believe these changes have to be seen. First of all, I need to tell you something about the changing role I see for the students. Fact one is new technologies are making individualization or customization of learning possible in a way that the old system, everybody reading the same text at the same time, could not offer. Fact two, nowadays laptops, iPads, smartphones are the student's library, homework, data storage, connection to the outside world. We need a greater involvement of students in the design of learning. And we need to see to it that they are going to feel themselves as co-responsible, co-owners of their own education. What about the students? The students, I have told you. Huh. What about the teachers? Well, first of all, most of the teachers go into the teaching profession because they want to help students. They are excellent and uh, creative people, but they need to be helped here. Um, I think that it is necessary that all students confer with their teachers about, in a new learning period, what is the content of what I have to learn and which technologies can be used to do so. And after consultation, these discussions need to be translated, written down in agreements, learning plans with all teachers. And the school manager, managers need to guard and guide this process. The school managers, they need to change as well. They need, they are the ones who can stop innovation if they want to, but they shouldn't of course. They should confer with the teachers in the same way as teachers and students could do. And they have to discuss uh, personal 
uh, improvement of using new technologies for educational purposes in all kinds of interviews, performance interviews for instance, they can talk with the managers about these improvements. <coughs> okay, I believe in those changes because I think they are absolutely necessary. If we wait too long, I don't know what will happen in schools, but you can't take them seriously if they're not using new technologies. The best people to start these changes in those schools who are not using it already are the pupils, the students. First of all, because they are the most important uh, people at school. But secondly, also, because they are easily to organize. Um, what I mean by that is, um, Martin Luther King once said, there is power in numbers and there is power in unity. So let's bring the students together, let them be of one mind and defy the old system. I'm a law-abiding person, I don't want to revolutionize them, but I feel that a gentle revolution would be necessary. And it must be easy to ask school management and school managers to discuss at school how ICT is used. Most of the schools do not do this already. And those discussions about ICT and the rules of using ICT at school could easily be ending in uh, a vision paper, translated in a uh, policy paper, even a step-by-step -step scenario. I hope that uh, you, if you have a chance of doing so, because real changes in education cannot be forced by political measures from the top down, it will have to be, it will have to happen at grassroots level. So if you have a chance, please help them. And I'm happy to help also, you can simply contact me and tell me that it was totally nonsense what I told you. But I hope that you will say, no, it's necessary that we have those changes. I thank you very much for your attention.